Hi, AD. I'm Dita Montes. Welcome to my home. I moved into this 1927 English Tudor about five years ago. When I moved into this house, it was all white walls, and I really loathe white walls. I love color. I like feeling like all my favorite colors are represented in the house. I had a mural painted that was inspired by a picture of a castle, and there's lots of little hidden things like a little monkey up there. There are a few white walls left like this one here because I'm going to cover this in feathers. I love having blank space to uh, come up with ideas. I started wearing vintage clothes because I couldn't afford all the cool designer jeans my friends had. And then that kind of spilled over into collecting vintage and antique things for my home. So this is my kitchen. I wanted to make a very glamorous kitchen because no matter what you do and no matter what your house looks like, everyone hangs out in the kitchen. I used to famously have a pink kitchen and so a lot of these things that I took from my pink kitchen and I used them here, like the sconces and the chandeliers. I gave these chairs all makeover and painted them. And I saw this faucet, it was the most outrageous thing and I had to have it. I just love it, it's really weird and I, it's not maybe the handiest thing, but I like it. I've also love my Aga stove. A lot of people talk about this stove when they come in. It's a British racing green stove. I had the plates dipped in copper because I, I love the copper and green and I had this made. So there were a lot of things that were big challenges and people that I had to find to make all these custom things for me which is not the easy way. I just wanted the most beautiful stove ever and I got this stove and then realized I had to learn how to use this stove. <laughs> this is my living room. I am a maximalist, not a minimalist. And this room is evidence of it. I have a lot of stuff. You see more of the vintage taxidermy and all my little found treasures. This is a new art piece that a friend of mine from Australia sent to me that does ethical taxidermy of things that died naturally and she made this bunny a little tail coat. I have a grandfather clock which is currently turned off so that it would not bing bong bing all over the videos. This is a piece that my friend Stacia found at a flea market and then bought the vintage fabric and redid this piece. This actually was a reproduction of a French sofa. It's not very big and also I should say every single sofa in this house is extremely uncomfortable. Um, there's really nowhere comfortable to sit in this house. These are some of my favorite taxidermy in the house. These are Victorian era bird taxidermy in these heart-shaped domes. Every time I've moved house, which is three times in the past 20 years, I hand carry those myself because if somebody ever shattered those, I would be devastated. These are all my vintage and rare books. Like This is a fun one. This is a very rare one. It's been a source of truth in burlesque and when you look at this book you realize that burlesque was not all Gypsy Rose Lee or like the movie portrayed burlesque but really it was kind of a glorified strip club in a lot of ways in the 30s and 40s and this book is the proof. I have a lot of collections of my vintage feathers from back in the days when ladies used to wear big beautiful feathers in their hats and you know they don't make them like this anymore I promise you because I buy modern feathers all the time and they do not look like this. Lots of useless information from a burlesque dancer. Feathers. I have a lot of powder puffs. I just like them. I keep getting them. Just like them. More powder puffs because you definitely need a powder puff on a stick too. This is my dining room. I bought this dining room set at the flea market and I put one of my favorite fabrics that I saw in Paris in a Jacques Garcia hotel and I had to have it, so I tracked it down and I put it on these flea market chairs. This was just a piece of glass that I cut because there was no glass top, and then my ladies that did all the murals, they painted this glass. I'd heard this story that Robert Smith from The Cure used to keep a lipstick on a, um, a string by his front door, and he just like put it on before he left, so I asked him once if that was true, and he said it was true at one time, so I put this lipstick on a gold chain so that when I'm having parties and I can't find my lipstick or I don't want to go upstairs to my vanity, then I can just like do it right here, so. It's kind of an antique mirror, so I can't see much, but it still works. Mm -hmm. 
This is an antique fishbowl that I bought when I was on my last US tour. I love going on tour because I have a semi truck filled with all my lighting and my props and all my gear. And I love to go to the antique stores and throw more stuff on there and my crew hates it. But I do, I bring them like this fishbowl and tell them find a spot for that. So this is my little patio. I like to have my tea here and watch the hummingbird fights that happen over this feeder. I love red geraniums, and so this is usually filled with red geraniums. I'm obsessed with it because I'm from Michigan, and I used to go to this place called the Grand Hotel, and so people from Michigan will know about this, but it's just the longest porch in the world, and it's just tons of boxes of red geraniums. So it's one of those childhood obsessions that has spilled over into my life. It's winter time, so the backyard is not in full swing, but I love collecting vintage patio furniture and redoing the cushions. So I've had this bed for many years and it's had, it's been like three different colors. And then this is my latest, newest one, which I'm very excited about because I love the tassels. My pool, which rarely gets used because it's freezing. And my pool house, which I turned into a pub. I kind of always envied people that had a tiki bar or something. So I thought, well, I have an English tutor, so I should make a pub. I had this stained glass put in here. It has little things that I like in there. There's a swan, there's a feather, a rose, a glass of champagne, and a magic mushroom. I have like a leather banquette over here, which actually holds pool toys and things like that. This is just like another thing for me to put stuff in. I've started collecting Toby jugs. So my fans bring me Toby jugs to put into my Pool House Pub. Here's the uh, Woman Cave Library, where I keep a lot of my art collection too. This is kind of just like a area I put pictures of myself because I'm too embarrassed to put them up on the main walls. <laughs> so I collect a lot of Hollywood memorabilia. This is the corset that Natalie Wood wore when she played burlesque star Gypsy Rose Lee in the 1962 film Gypsy. And then this is a corset that Betty Grable wore in one of her films in the late 40s. And this is kind of like my woman cave and TV room. I bet you can't find the TV. I love art and I like to look at art and I don't look, like to look at screens. So I hid the TV behind this piece of art. So you basically open this up and pull the TV out and you have to turn it sideways. It's kind of silly, but it is what it is. And this is one of my favorite artists. His name is Peter Dribben. I have four paintings from him, which also appears on a men's magazine. Betty Page posed for these kinds of things and they're kind of, they're men's magazines, they're racy. This magazine, I have this painting over here. And then I also have this one over here on that wall. I'm very proud of these. These are Betty Page's favorite shoes. And they came from the Irving Claw Studios, which, um, is where she took all those vintage bondage photos. And I have the model release that she signed in 1952 for $60. Very simple. I mean, people make me sign like five page model releases now. This is like four sentences. This is one of my treasured possessions, an art deco bar. I love painted glass and reverse painted glass. It's one of my favorite things. And, oh my God, hold on. Okay, I have way too many martini and champagne glasses too, as you would guess. Oh, I have my barnoculars in here. Take this to like music festivals and load it up with my favorite booze. No one would suspect a thing, right? I've collected a lot of this art over the years that inspired my pinup career. And also they painted all these jewels um, that are kind of meant to be holding the paintings. And then I also love this tassel. <laughs> There's a designer called Jacques Garcia that always does these long rope tassels. I shoved this into my suitcase. <laughs> it's really heavy um, on one of my trips um, home from Paris, but I really love it. Every time I walk up there, I love the feeling of that rope, if you know what I mean. This is my upstairs area where my bedroom is and all my closets are. I think they used to be children's rooms, but they're not anymore. <laughs> I have a very, very close friend who's a shoe designer, so that's why I have this many shoes. <laughs> and of course, I have all the showbiz shoes here. There's shoes I wear a lot more than others, so those are kind of front and center usually, and they're kind of arranged by color. All the everyday ballet flats are down here, because I don't wear high heels every day, and 
most of the black shoes are together. This is all my favorite shoes right here. And then the other side are my like kind of like secondary shoes. I'll show you a pair of special ones. These are embroidered um, from a, a house called Lesage. And they also have um, these little Marie Antoinettes on them. And they have my name on it. It says, these are Dita's with love from Christian. So I have a really big vintage hat collection. This is from the 40s. They were called tilt or doll style hats. This is a little fedora, like a menswear style fedora, and it has a fake parrot on it. I've had this one since I first started collecting vintage, actually. This is my vintage brooch collection. I love collecting big, fancy brooches. Everybody needs a rhinestone prey mantis. So this is my bedroom. I, this is my version of minimalism. Light colors, not too much clutter. This is Alistair. Oh, seems he was just having a kitty dream. Wake up, you've got company. My friend Stacia and I designed this bed um, after a Mae West bed. Mae West famously had mirrors all over her bedroom because she said she liked to see how she was doing. My boyfriend and I designed these curtains together um, based on a few historic uh, pictures. And I waited for months to get this fabric in and took it to a drapery place. And I actually had to go there in person and help pin these on because they didn't do it right. And I was like, honestly, just do it like this. And they were like, we didn't think about doing it like that. So I love going to the workrooms and torturing the people that work there. And then they end up liking it in the end because they learn something new. This is my lingerie drawers. I am a lingerie designer, so I have to wear a lot of my own lingerie to see how it goes. These acrylic handles were a huge nightmare. These were in a constant state of disrepair for like two years before I found someone that could actually fix the original acrylic that somebody bungled. In case that person thinks they're gonna take credit for this, no. This is my vanity. It's um, from the 30s. It's authentic. All this stuff is museum waxed down because that cat over there loves to wake me up at like 3 or 4 in the morning by knocking all these things off. Another little patio. This is like a great place that I like to escape when I'm entertaining and I can see everything that's going on. Me and my cat like to hang out out here too. Okay, AD, I've got to feed this cat, so I'm going to show you out. Thanks for coming.